Hi, this is Tom Grolowitz again with Ben Nelson behind the camera, I'm just giving you hey. an update of our little neon project. The biggest change you can see on the inside is my new little friend down here. We've upgraded the shift knob. The original, which was this nice little leather unit, was really great except it didn't have any buttons on it. So I've been doing a lot of wiring and changes to the motor controller to get it to perform and do the things I want. Because of the way it's set up, I do need to go up and shift through the gears, first all the way up through fifth. I've got no problems getting it up well over 50 miles an hour. Due to some other reasons, I haven't tried the freeway yet, but it shouldn't be a problem. So the way it's set up now, I've got my shifter, start out in first gear, accelerate it up. I've modified the tachometer so it reads the motor's tack, the electric motor's tack now. And when that gets up to right around 2800 3000 rpm which is about twice what the motor is rated for at normal speed it's time to shift i just let off a little on the gas pull it into neutral the transmission is happy to let go and then the problem is synchronizing the motor into the transmission in the new gear and the blue button here will immediately bring the motor down to about a thousand rpm at that point i can start going into the next gear let off on the, mo the button with the pedal all the way to the floor and the motor accelerates up and as it crosses the point where the two speeds match it just drops into gear and I keep going. So I've got it down to the point now where I can shift gears in a couple of seconds which is just about right. All the way up through fifth gear. The other button on here was a change, this is the orange button, was a change from the way I originally had the motor set up. I originally had it set up so if you took your foot all the way off the gas pedal it would turn off the motor and let the car coast. It turns out that that's kind of a problem. If you aren't paying attention and let your foot all the way off the pedal, the motor controller switches off, the car coasts, but the old motor controller I've got will not let you pick up where you left off speed-wise. If you hit the gas after that, the motor tries to start at zero again. So the only time I coast is when I explicitly want to do it going down a hill or something like that, and then I can go ahead and re-accelerate the motor and match the speeds to put it back in gear. So I don't use the coast as much as I thought I would. Instead, I no longer need my brakes, mostly. Uh, as it's set right now, whenever the car is turned on, the motor controller is on and the motor is powered at zero RPMs. So if I'm on a hill in the old days when you had to hold with the clutch, I don't have to do anything. The car is happy to sit there and wait. The other side is if I let my foot off the gas pedal, the car will slow all the way down to a stop in a reasonable amount of time. It's about the same as using the brakes gently. The problem I've got with that is it doesn't turn on the brake lights. So my next little project is going to either be a button to turn on the brake lights or an accelerometer that whenever the car is decelerating, it turns on the brake lights. Let the guy behind me know that I'm slowing down. Other than that, the car is running great. Uh, I've done two full charge cycles. Uh, the first time I got 53 miles, the second time 48 miles on a full charge. Uh, the way it's set up now, the motor controller will stop running if the voltage pack voltage drops below 250. At 25 batteries, that's right about 1.6, 1.7 volts per cell, which is the manufacturer's recommended discharge point for this type of battery. So right now, the motor controller shuts out when the battery pack is properly discharged. That's why I don't over-discharge it. The problem is, what do you do once that happens? Back here behind the seat, and Ben, if you pull the lever on there, we can probably just flip it forward. Nope, didn't work. You can open the side door looking, too. There we go. I've got two little 13 amp hour batteries. And they are wired in series with the rest of the batteries, but I've got a choice. I can run straight through normally the battery pack, or I can move this connector over, run through the extra two batteries into the battery pack. So when the controller shuts down and I run out of power, I move that over and I've got enough juice to go another mile or two and get to where I'm going or get home. So I've got a reserve gas tank now. Other than that, the car's running great. Cool. We'll uh, we'll do another update uh, sometime soon when we got any uh, other additional changes to the car. Exactly. We're down to little things now. We uh, replaced some springs in the back, so if you look at the car from the outside, it doesn't drag its butt anymore. It runs a whole lot smoother and nicer as well. 
Uh, and minor stuff about the vacuum assist on the brakes, um, maybe a couple more batteries in the front, I'm still not sure about that. And uh, the dashboard monitoring system is the next thing I'm working on. So all in all, it's a usable car, it's running great.